don't know if you recognize that guy, but we first came to know who Hader Kadim was after the Dawson College shootings. He survived, but still has one of the bullets that hit him lodged in his skull. He was a teenager in 2006. Now, eight years later, he's a young man driven to make a difference in the world. He joins us tonight along with Francis Amankra, both just back from Ghana after founding a project called We Go Ghana. Welcome to you both. Thank you. So, Hader, I'm going to start with you. We first met lot long after the Dawson shootings. I did a story on the survivors, of which you were one. I don't want to dwell on the past too long here, but I just want to ask you, how did what happened in 2006 change you? Well, uh, it, was, it was a very positive change, as weird as it may sound. Mm -hmm. um, since then, I've been you know, trying to maximize or enjoy as much as possible my life. And when I say enjoy, it's probably not the typical way that we say it. Just, um, just do the best in, in, in leaving something good in this world and, and really enjoying every day to the fullest. And Is that's that how We Gonna Go came to be? Yeah, I mean, I, I always knew that after my degree, I wanted to discover the world and, and volunteer, do something good to a uh, less privileged area in the world. So uh, that's how we started We Gonna Go. So you guys began this together. Francis, tell us about some of the things that you did and saw there. We're going to be looking at some video that you guys both shot. Tell us about some of the experiences. Yeah, well, mostly we were promoting education, so teaching English, mm -hmm. mathematics, talking to the parents, talking to the teachers. And uh, some of the things we saw, obviously, we saw the warmness of the people, the openness of the people, but we also, we also saw the potential of uh, the Ghanaian people. And uh, I think one thing that we noticed is the need to develop that potential and help, basically, the Ghanaian people in that leadership of that, uh, basically, developing their own lives. And is education key, in your opinion, to that? I think it's yeah. I think it's very key uh, because with education comes knowledge, and with knowledge comes power to change your own lives. Mm -hmm. And why Ghana, Hader? Well, uh, we we were brainstorming about different countries, but uh, we saw that Ghana had a lot to offer us in terms of well, first Ghana is a stable country, mm -hmm. and we wanted this experience to be an exchange, not just we go volunteer and give, but we also wanted to learn, and it's actually what happened. I think we learned so much more. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is what Ghana offered us, and so we decided to go for it. I'm sure you saw so many things that impacted you and moved you, but I would love to you both to share something that you sort of will never forget, something that really touched you guys. Me personally, um, I, I always say it's the warmth of the people. It's incredible how uh, genuinely welcoming and generous they are. They Is have that so surprising? Little. Was that surprising to you? Um, I don't know because I, I, when I went to Iraq, I, I saw that too, but uh, seeing it in Ghana was just a whole new level. And they don't have much, but they'll share everything with you. And that just touched me a lot. Wow. What about mm -hmm. you, Francis? Definitely. I have to agree with uh, Haider on that. I think. Uh, W the first time I met the kids, they were so eager to learn and eager to learn not like about me and about the subject we came to teach. Uh, they were they I've never seen kids like that, and I was a little bit surprised because I I figured in the village maybe they don't value education as much as we do, but I think they value it just as much, if not more, than we do actually. So very surprising to me. Do you think what you guys did changed their lives in any way? I mean, as much as possible within the month that we went, but uh, it's good to know that it's an ongoing project before us and after us, and who knows, maybe uh, we'll go back there at some point. So tell us what's happening now and what you're going to do with the video that we're looking at right now. So um, right now we're trying, to, we're trying to create some videos to uh, summarize our entire experience uh, in more or less maybe three parts. And uh, I don't know, for sure, for me, it's the first step of a, of a lifetime commitment to volunteering in, in less developed areas. And yeah, definitely. I think the video is going to allow everyone to live the experience the way we did and us to relive it as well. And honestly, this is basically the like a gateway to like a journey, like mm -hmm. a live journey for sure. And yeah. is it Africa in particular? you guys drawn to African countries? Uh, personally, uh, I'm drawn to the world, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to leave a positive change as much as possible, wherever mm -hmm. possible. So Africa was a start. Yeah, and, uh, definitely. definitely uh, they say Ghana is the gateway to Africa, and I think Africa is also the gateway to to the developing world. It's easy to, to start with, but for sure, uh, the world is ours to conquer. <laughs> so if people want to take a look at your videos, they can go onto your Facebook page. It's been up on the screen. Yes. And yeah. they can see what you've been doing. Yeah, that's right. Congratulations to you both. Thanks so much for coming in to Thank talk about your Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.